on until at least 15 in case someone comes on. How so, long is it? 15 minutes? Yep. Okay. So you get to stare at our lovely faces. Well, I'm going to mute here. myself. Uh, so. I mean, I, it, it would be nice to have a conversation that I don't think we can uh, on the record, right? We don't want to. We can. It's just that anybody could listen to it who requested it. So, it... yeah, yeah, there's no point in. I, I could ask you how things are going in Salem, but <laughs> let's not have that on the record. <laughs>
Chair Williamson. Yes, ma'am. And we have somebody who has entered the meeting oh, and may have some questions. Okay. Would, uh, Karen? Would you, would you identify yourself, please? Who has entered the meeting? Looks like Rebecca Anderson. Ms. Anderson, do you have anything you'd like to tell the commission, please? Well, when it comes in regard to the, the new rules that are coming out and the adjustments to them, um, my husband was a union outrider in the Bay Area for many, many years, and this is an area we dealt with. And um, I think creating rules that um, coincide with the rules in California and other states so that there's consistency is a, is a really good thing. And I just wanted to, to put that out there. And also we're watching a lot of this HISA stuff come along and it's one thing to create rules, it's a whole other thing to enforce them. So, and a lot of people that work on the rules I've never worked on the track and the enforcement end of it. So it's it's interesting for us to stand back and watch this all unfolding now. Um, do you uh, do you know if these rules are coinciding with California? Well, I was reading through them and I I sent a lot of information back to Karen on it, um, but for example, the provisional license was actually, I had great discussion with my husband about this. That was actually developed by him and his partner, Nancy Barney at Golden Gate Fields in 2004. And um, the reason for it was that somebody came to the track and wanted to get a license. They didn't really know this person. Normally, back back then and back in the day, there were all these ranches around the racetrack down there in Pleasanton and in various places. Everybody knew everybody. And so normally a trainer would come in and say, oh, hi, Mr. Anderson. This is I want to introduce so and so who's been riding for me or grooming for me. And and I feel they're competent at this point. You know, They had somebody who could attest to their ability level before they licensed them. And at that point in time, if you gave somebody a license, they had it. You couldn't get it back. It was, there were no provisions on the license. So they decided to develop a provisional license to be able to monitor a person's development and make sure that they were truly ready to get that license. And during that time, if they didn't either participate in the process by showing up and getting on horses, or if they did not show an advancement in their ability, the license could be taken back. So do you have any specific uh, suggestions for changing the language of this uh, proposal? Um, one of the things that I noted that was different from what the original that, that they developed um, was that it says, that the candidate needs to work with a, a trainer. And the way they set it up was that they had to be, they could be under multiple trainers, but the trainer had to sign on as a mentor of that rider. And this would, would limit or um, supervise the horses they're getting on. Because when you get a license and you walk out into that racetrack, people look at you and go, oh, they got a license. Okay, they can handle anything. That's not true. You know, a lot of people just don't, whether it's a pony rider or whoever, and um, it, it creates a mentoring process, but I think you had a trainer and I think it could be multiple trainers as, as long as they had paperwork saying they were monitoring the development of this individual, which is a good thing, mentoring. So you, you suggest that more than one person could be the trainer mentor it could be it could be more than one trainer any trainer that wanted them to get on their horses 
could do that. But what happened and why the, the provisional license was created was that they licensed this individual. They had reservations. He said, well, you know, he's not really ready for prime time, but, you know, with some experience, everybody's got to start somewhere. So they licensed this person. Well, the person took the license and went down to Santa Anita. And immediately my husband's phone was ringing from the outriders down there who were having a fit going, what have you done to us? You've unleashed this person on us and they're not ready to be here. It's dangerous for them yeah, and everybody I, else. I understand that. So are, are you suggesting that we redo this rule to provide for provisional license? Well, you have the ruling in there. I just I just looked at it and it was it was a portion of what was developed. And and you do get this where where people you've got some good riders up here. I don't I make no mistake. And 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 I appreciate it. a lot of them are quarter horse riders. It's just really different when you get down there in that kind of traffic and under that kind of pressure. It's you know, you might have. 10 horses come to the track in the morning up here at Grants Pass, you'll have 30 at a time on the track down there. Just a different level. And if 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 they know that their provisional license has these requirements, then they're going to hopefully step up to that standard. Um, I'll give you an example. When our son wanted to gallop, uh, my husband sat him down and said, listen, these licenses are for people who want to be professionals here. This is not a weekend warrior situation. This is not for somebody who just wants to come in and has this pie in the sky, I want to ride at the racetrack idea. But the biggest thing is when on the fair circuits, and we ran into this um, with our own son, um, these kids can get pressured to do things that are unsafe for themselves and others by trainers and even by stewards in their effort to get races covered. And I think there need to be um, safety nets to, to keep young riders from getting manipulated into situations they shouldn't get into. So did I understand that you have provided some written uh, uh, proposals or suggestions to uh... I did. I sent yeah. I sent Karen some Karen. Okay, so are, are those something uh, we can put in the record, Karen? We can we can put them all except that I'm not sure if we're talking about the right rule. Oh. This because this rule that we're talking about today is about further explanation about timelines and removes unnecessary language. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm like confused. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not sure if we have the right rule um, that we're commenting on, which- Oh, I'm sorry. Okay my, to my hear from you. I, I'm glad that we're being able to hear from you. It's not that at all. I just wanna make sure that we're commenting on this rule, which was this, it was, um, Four six two zero zero one zero zero eight, and at that rule, the changes in it, the amendments in it, are to change our address it was the first one, and then to amend some language that's either outdated or further explain timelines when there is um, uh, hold on, let me look at it. When there's a hearing, hearing. Sorry, when, when there's a hearing requested and answers, so it's for hearing request and answers, consequences to fail, uh, of failure to answer when there is a hearing. So what I think I'm hearing from you, Rebecca, is, is on some of the other things that we have going. Yes, I'm, I apologize. Right. And, and that should be addressed in our licensing um, section of the rules. So yeah, that's I think so. Correct. Correct. And Correct. frankly, Rebecca, I, I love some of your recommendations. And I think they're really great. Um, as you know, we have a brand new steward. Well, he's not a brand new steward, but he's a new steward for us coming on. Or maybe you weren't aware of that. Uh, yes, I am aware of that. And and I was really sorry to hear that we lost Marty. Uh, 
with all the changes that are going on, I'm not sure that I really want to make that change right before we start this meet. However, when this meet is over, I'm hoping you'll give me a call or send me an email. We can look at maybe making some, some changes in there at that time. I think that would be a more appropriate time to take up another rule, especially well, if it's going to impact the riders um, for the and it's right before the meet. But I do I do agree with a lot of your your background, your interest. I've I've seen some real. I, I was talking with Mary Boyle last night. We were discussing this, and and she saw a rider get hurt very badly that did not want to ride a horse and was pressured into it and ended up and ended up getting hurt very badly and. and uh, so I'm, I'm, I am passionate about the safety end of it. Yeah, and, and I agree, and I am as well. And one of the things I commit to doing is spending a lot more time at the track this year and being on the back side and really seeing what's going on. So if you see an unsafe act and I'm there, grab me, please. And uh, so, any, any, any suggestions that we can get that are specific as to the language would help us to do the rule the way you're suggesting. Um, and uh, it's, uh, yes, Karen. Yeah. Um, just so you know, Charlie, we have received from Rebecca some extensive uh, language and comments on some of, of all the whole of the things that we're doing. So we're just, we'll go through fine tooth comb and make sure that we've identified which thing belongs to which rule. And, and you'll definitely have those. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Anderson. Very, very much appreciate your cooperation and, and participation here. I think you can see, Rebecca, we're going through, um, Ms. Anderson, we're going through a lot of roles right now. So we're slowly picking our way through all of them to, to make sure we're in. in oh, and it's, it's, it's brutal. I know bylaws and uh, they're necessary and you don't want them to be too restrictive, but you, you want them to be a, a functioning, um, something that that the community can function within do you okay. need me to leave this meeting is this a private i thought no, it was not. Public. Uh, public. Public. we're, we're going to close, close the meeting now um uh, but you're welcome to stay until we actually do it uh it, <clears throat> it is now 11 22 and the public hearing on the commission's proposed rule amendment for rs excuse me oar 462 001 0008 is now over. Thank you for your input.